What is going on guys, Sam Board here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I'm here today at B1 Gym. I'm getting a session in with Jace. So I'm gonna be putting him for a push session today. He's a big, big boy, a lot bigger than myself. So I have no doubt he is gonna make me look like a bit of a child today. Pretty sure he's a big pusher. So probably lifting a lot more as well. So we'll see if we can keep up, but get comfortable and enjoy this video. Yeah. Yeah. Halfway there. <laughs> Come on, get out, get out. Who are you, man? Up, up, up. With me, with me. Two more with me. Up. <laughs> this is actually so good. Yeah, it's nice, man. Uh, nice. What do you normally do for your second um, rest pause or just? Yeah, yeah, I, I'm keen for a rest pause, man. I'll two and a half. Go, yeah, yeah. Fuck it. I go two and a half of a rest. Maybe pause. just load this. Two, three, oh. one. Let's get it. This one. Two. Three. Perfect move. Four. Five. Good work. Six. Seven. Good. Come on, no, no, no. Eight, nine. Eight. All right, saved it, saved it. 15 second rest. 15 second rest. One, two, three, four, five, six. Get set. Five seconds. Five, four, three. Let's get it. Let's go. Come on, half the reps, half the reps, three to four, one. Get three to four. Two. Come on. Last one. Up. Not gonna help. Control, five seconds on the way down. One, two, three, four, perfect. Oh. Easy. Keep them coming. Uh, Who are you? Uh, uh, shit. 15 seconds. Three, four. Put your timing down. Six. <laughs> 14. Oh, you're early. Let's go, Jace. Who are you, man? Two more. Outside is brutal. It does feel good, man. Good. Um, let's move on to. Do you want to do a flat chest press next? Yeah, yeah. We like that Drax one there. That yeah, it's pretty. Cool. Control, five seconds. Uh, Two, three, good. Oh. Yeah, that feels good. Feels so good. <laughs> no, James, it's not going to be a mashup thing, so I'd rather not. Yeah, let's go. Keep him coming. <clears throat> Easy. <clears throat> Four more, let's go. Hey. My head. Look at the chicken legs. 
So guys, set number two on this, we're gonna go into a drop set followed by a rest pause on the same set. So myself and James have been implementing a lot more intensity techniques in, our, in the early stage of the session at the moment, purely because we're picking up a lot of niggles due to the load we're lifting later on in the session. So by putting intensity techniques early on like this, it's gonna mean we're still gonna be progressing our lifts later on in the session, but it's gonna be with a, a lesser load and we're still taking the sets to failure, we can still grow. But because we're more fatigued, the load's gonna be less and it's less risk on our joints and things like this because this is the most injury free I've felt now in the last couple months. We were dealing with knee injuries, shoulder injuries. We had that forearm injury from the, from the arm wrestle with Larry Wills. So we've had a lot of fucking injuries recently. So this is kind of how we're adapting our training to, to kind of help prevent that in future. Oh, come on. One. Two, perfect. Perfect. Oh, good. Perfect. Eight, nine, ten is eight, nine, ten, eight, nine, ten. Rest. Fifteen, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's get set. Then five. Four, all right, let's go. Three, let's go, let's go. One. Two, get five to six, come on. Three. Three with me, let's go. Three, two, one, perfect. So as you can see, that set, he's took it to absolute failure. A lot of people associate progression with load. It's not just load, you can see you know, the way he's ended the set, he's took a one second pause, then he's uh, took a two to three second negative rep down. So you can see it's not just about progressing weight, progressing weight, it's his progression there is the way he finishes the set, the way he executes the set. So don't get caught up in, do you know what, to progress it must be load. It can be technique, it can be intensity, amplifying, it can also be form as well. 100%, especially the way we're kind of transitioning now into that lifestyle kind of bodybuilder. We're not gonna be pushing food crazy hard. It gets to a point where the load's really not gonna be going up. So to actually progress, it's gonna be by adding on these intensifiers and things like this and just making sure execution's perfect and, uh, you on know, the exercises. I know if we ask 100 people, you're gonna ask people, you know, there's a feeling you get out of adding in intensity improvised. You get off the set and you're like, fucking hell, I feel crazy full. When you're hitting them six to nine reps, Let's be honest, they're not fun. You get off and you're like, fuck me, I feel sore. Mm. So, you know, I, I personally think this is a more enjoyable way of training. You know, as people call it, it's chasing the pump, but we're not just chasing the pump, we're chasing the pump at the same time, trying to progress a moderate load. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's go, James. <laughs> oh shit, I changed the grip. Let's go. Keep him coming, man. That's it. Save the job. There we go. So, Jace. Easy, man. Easy. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's go. Ooh. Who are you, man? Ooh. Easy seven reps. That's four, five, six, seven. Make it ah. Back up. 
Ah. Which grip do you prefer, the high one or the low one? I'm stronger here. Yeah. So I prefer being the grip I'm weaker at. Yeah. What movement now? Uh, shoulder press. This is like a, it's a restaurant, but it's like they do like breakfast stuff. We're going there again tomorrow. It's like they do you know tell a French toast. The best cheat, the best cheat meals are breakfast. Yeah. So that's what all our boys arrive. I'll do it, bro. I'll do we it. Got, um, but that's what I'm doing this year. I'm trying to, I'm trying to travel more. Yeah. I'm gonna probably do three weeks in Miami and just travel and train. Cause you know what it is. When you're in shape, people talk to you in the gym. Yeah. You just network. Me and Jay find it easy. We're twins as well, and like, it's I don't easy. know. Yeah, yeah, it just creates more combo. It, it does. People like we get approached a lot because of that. I've hardly met anyone. I met people when I start working in the gym, and they're like, he walked up, he's walking at any gym. Oh, you guys twins? Yeah. Shoulder press. Shoulder press. So exercise number three, we're going on to a shoulder press. We're actually going to turn this into more of an incline press. Trying to bring up our top line at the moment. So we're going to sit further on the seat, kind of get a bit of an arch in. It's going to help tag in some upper chest fibers alongside our delts as well. This might be a bit heavy, to be fair. Let's see how we get on. Yeah, it'll be all right. Come on. Easy. Come on. Seven, eight, seven, eight. Breathe, breathe. Big breath, big breath, let's go. Drive, breathe out, breathe out, 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 out. Ooh. Yeah, man. Then it was me, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah you're up, man. I see you all with a slight arc, yeah? Yeah, that's what I'm going for. Just trying to bring my chest into a bit as well. Easy. Let's go, Joe. That is a hard. Yeah, you do look about a lot. You're always like in the middle of your set. I'm like trying fucking... to get out of the seat. I'm yeah. like, get me. <laughs> oh my god, that's hard. Around, you're gonna hurt yourself. Last, last, last. Let's go, one, two, three, four, five, drive, drive, control, control, way down, control, one, two, three, All right, guys, so that concludes our, our compound for the day. We're now going to go on some isolation work. So we're going to start with two side deltoid movements. The first one's going to be the Panatta standing side raise, and then the second, the seated side raise machine. So the reason I'm opting for machine side raise variation instead of free weights is because it, you can load the side deltoid through the full range of motion. Now, what I mean by this is, so if we're going to use like free weights or dumbbells, um, what's basically going to happen here is we're going to have a very uneven strength curve. So if you were to, for example, pick up 50 pound dumbbells and go through a, a six inch no a, a two inch kind of range of motion from the bottom right with your arms right by down by your side that would be very very easy however if you were to go up here with the same weight through the same range of motion like that would be like fucking incredibly hard in comparison so as you can see it's a lot harder at the top of the movement compared to at the bottom so the very uneven strength curve and the only point of the movement where your side delta is actually going to be producing the maximum amount of torque is when you're pretty much parallel to the ground up here and the other 70 80 percent of the movement is almost wasted because our, our, our delts aren't working at full capacity so going on machine variations or cable variations are going to allow us to load the side side delta through that full range of motion and produce a much more even strength curve so after those two side delt variations we're going to go on to a pec deck fly so this is going to be our chest isolation movement for the day so with this, I always like to opt for, again, either a pec deck fly 
or a seated cable fly. So I like to be firmly placed in a seat with a back support. You obviously have the cable variations as well, but I find when you're standing, it's very easy to add a lot of momentum into the movement. Um, and, it, it, and obviously that takes the load away from the, the muscle you're actually trying to target. So if we can actually be seated, back support, everything stable, you're going through the same range of motion, very easy to progress and keep the load, and keep all of the load on your chest. We're then going to go on to one tricep exercise to finish. So we're just going to go on a tricep row, push down, nice and easy, three sets on that, bang that out, finish that last set of an intensifier, so either a drop set or a DC rest pause, and that will conclude the session. So guys, we thought we'd just jump on here, ask a few questions to Jace. He's not only a successful, I guess, bodybuilder, but he's also a very guess. successful <laughs> retired, bodybuilder. retired bodybuilder. I don't know what you call yourself a minute, but he's also a very successful coach as well. So we'll probably dive into a couple of questions about that, and then a couple of questions about training as well. Um, but yeah, so Jace. So firstly, if you could have any physique in the world, who's going to be? Uh, everyone's going to say Chris Bumstead, but I'm going to say mine. <laughs> yeah. No, all jokes aside, I think if I had to pitch towards a physique, it would be a classic physique because you know it's not got that freak factor; it's still got that nice lifestyle factor, and that's sort of where we're all sort of digging now to get to. So I would say a classic physique because again, everyone wants to have a bit of muscle. Everyone wants to be lean. No one wants to be too big. And, you know, they want to be able to dress nice and enjoy their lifestyle as well. And I think so. Yeah, a classic physique would be where I would be aiming for. So anyone in that top five, anyone, yeah, pretty yeah. much that would be. So if you could give any advice to someone looking to scale their coaching business, what would it be? It would be produce content, but not just produce content, produce valuable content, sort of find out what your target audience likes, you know? Simple things you can do, I say to all my guys that I help, run a Q&A, see the results. If 15 guys are saying that they want to know about training and two people are saying that they want to know about nutrition, there's no point us putting out nutritional content. So if you want to scale your business, sort of find out your target audience, be granular in what you put out and make sure it aligns to them. Um, because at the end of the day, content is key, but most importantly, valuable content that serves a purpose is even better. Yeah. So, uh, yes. And finally, our last question. So if you, could have, if you could give three pointers to someone who's just starting the gym now, three things you wish you knew when you started, what would that be? Three things I, I, three things I wish I knew when I started was listen to one voice. Ultimately, if you've got a coach, just listen to that voice. If you're doing self-programming, just be confident in your self-programming. If you walk in a gym, walk in a big gym, everyone's doing something different. Everyone has their own methods. Everyone has their own way of doing things. So don't let every Tom, Dick and Harry dictate or influence the way you do things. So be confident in what you stand for and run with that because I feel you'll have less mental fogginess and you'll just have a direct vision on your goal. And you know, it's trial and error. If you try it for six months and it don't work, what, what's the most? You've learned that it's not work. So I would just, you know, stick to what you want to go with rather than listen to everyone in the gym. So just listen to one voice. Um, secondly, what advice would I give is just being consistent, you know, and it does sound so cliche, but I, you know, I don't mean just being consistent with training, I mean being consistent in, you know, doing your steps every day, being consistent in doing your cardio, so just being consistent in everything, because all them little one percenters do add up, be consistent with your sleep, and listen, honestly, it'll be the fastest way that you ever make progress. Um, and thirdly, my last bit of advice, you lot can help me here, because I'm <laughs> Last bit of advice would be invest in yourself. Yeah. Like a lot of people have, have done this before, they've walked the walk, or they've mastered the craft, and you'll make progress a lot quicker, and learn a lot quicker. You'll, you'll save a lot of time in the process, and you'll learn a lot on the way, because there's a hundred ways to skin a cat. 
And listen, once you get a coach, you might sit back and say, do you know what, my way is not always right. So it's a great learning tool, or you might say, do you know what, my way suits me more. So regardless, in that investment, you've learned one or two things. 100%, and even if it's not coaching, there's a lot of members' portals and things out there which offer a lot of great advice. Um, so I recommend just investing in yourself. That'd be my advice. But yeah, we'll wrap this video up here, guys. Cheers for watching and cheers for the session, guys. We'll see you in the next one.